Then the mother of the sons of Zebedee came up to him with her sons, and kneeling before him, she asked him for something. He said to her, What do you want? She said to him, Say to these two sons of mine are to sit one at your right hand and the other to your left in your kingdom. Now, most preachers like to use this story to scold the children of Zebedee, they can scold James and John and their mother because they just don't get it yet. I personally am a fan. Um, I like her. Uh, if you don't know, she's actually his aunt. It's his aunt Solomon. And firstly, I like her Jewish mom, Chutzpah, that she's politicking for her boys like, uh, what's it, Beverly Goldberg, for the ultimate position. It's the best position to be for eternity on the right side and left side of Jesus. So I respect that she has the uh, chutzpah to actually do that. I think it's, it's, it's funny, it's entertaining, it's set up a precedent for the next 2,000 years. Um, but you'll like her even more if you know her full story. About a week later, when all the disciples abandon Jesus, go into hiding, his right-hand man, Peter denies him three times, and they completely all abandon him in his uh, most important moment. Mary, Mary Magdalene, Salome, and John are present at the cross. So Jesus answered, You do not know what you were asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I'm about to drink? They said to him, We are able. He said to them, You will drink my cup, but to sit at my right hand and at my left is not mine to grant those whom it has been prepared by my Father. So indeed, they will drink from his cup. According to Acts 12.2, James is the first of all the disciples to be martyred. He's martyred by the sword. John survives several attempts to be martyred, but lives out his old age in the Isle of Patmos as a prisoner, as an exile on a prison colony. In fact, there's a good story at the Last Supper in John 21 that sums up this whole lesson and talks about this idea how John will be the one who's not martyred. As Peter asks, Jesus, what exactly is going to be John's fate? Jesus says, that's none you. Peter says, none you. Jesus says, none you business. Which is a 21st century translation, but it's actually very accurate to what the Bible says. It's, if it is my will that he remains until I come, what is that to you? You follow me. And that's the point of this whole lesson. This is the whole point of all the different laborers who are so worried about everyone else. Jesus is basically saying, stop worrying about everyone else. Mind your own business. And the business at hand is, are you right with God? Or as Jesus asked Peter, who do you say that I am? Stop comparing yourself to the world. If you were the only person on earth, Jesus would still have come and died for you. He loves you that much. Stop complaining. Stop measuring yourself against your neighbor. Stop thinking as man thinks. Start thinking as God thinks. And get right with the Lord.